Hello everyone, my name is Encore, and this is your daily reminder that tomorrow never comes, meaning your tomorrow, my tomorrow, none of it is guaranteed. And so we need to get up off of our hands and shape our own destinies and especially our future, you know, our financial destiny. We need to take control of it, some ownership of it, have some accountability. And in order to get down that path, there's no better medium than the crypto space. That's my personal opinion. That's what I'm here to impart some crypto knowledge. And more importantly than that is to maybe provide some interest where you want to go down that rabbit hole yourself. You have to do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I say is financial advice. But I strongly recommend that you jump into the space, at least learn about the space. You know, if you're dismissing it, you're dismissing it without correct knowledge. And if you're if you haven't if you haven't jumped in or you're indifferent, it's important to go down that path and to kind of see what the potentials are, what the possibilities are for you and for those you love. Having said all that, I thought we'd do something a little different today. You know, a lot of people like to delve into uh, the financial instruments and the financial outcomes that are possible. And that's all important. And it's definitely interesting. It's definitely what got me interested. But one of the passions I have, one of the interests I have is sports. And I find it fascinating because sports is something that's loved across the world. Whether you speak the same language as a sport you love or not, the language of sport is understood universally. And so, you know, from hockey to basketball, football, American football, you know, the rest of the world will say their football, meaning soccer, is the real football. So that's fine. That's fair. Uh, Cricket. Uh, I've played rugby, so so there is there isn't a single sport that I haven't had interest in or don't have interest in currently, or haven't at least attempted to play. And I think it's fascinating that the the world can can interact with their favorite sport, their favorite teams, and they can gain so much knowledge through sports, not only just on the field, but in this in this. Uh, in, in these regards that I'm talking about when it comes to crypto is if you find your team or your sport valuable, it brings value to you and many you know. And what you find value in is partnering or interacting with the crypto space. Then the question you need to ask is why? Okay, so all of us need to start conversations, not just about crypto, but anything, but specifically today about crypto. And ask yourself a simple question of why would the team I think is valuable, the world thinks is valuable, or why, you know, my, my circle of influence or my area, my geographical area finds important or valuable, why would they jump into the crypto space? What's valuable crypto? And, and at least maybe that will get the gears in your mind turning as to, hey, maybe I need to kind of look into this. All right. And another question is, well, why do we look at, why am I looking at athletes? They got lots of money. What does that have to do with me? And here's the thing, is we need to look at what the what those individuals with money, what are they doing with their money? We need to understand, especially with athletes, their window of opportunity, their shelf life is so small. We're looking at four years as an average career for a football player, American football player. So what they do with their money, how they think their money's gonna grow and prosper, that's what we need to kind of look at. And so if they're, touch, if they're having touch points with the crypto space, Maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something for us to look into. All right. Crypto is one of the greatest and that will be the generational wealth transfer, the greatest generational wealth transfer we've ever seen. That's my opinion. OK, so let's let's jump into here as, as to what I think, you know, is important. And just for fun, let's go down some of these athletes and some of these industries and see what happens with it. And if for whatever reason, my video cuts out here, not my video, but the screen sharing, uh, where it's just my face and it's just the uh, the screens themselves. We're still going to roll with it. Uh, maybe you guys get bored of looking at me anyway. So let's just go here. So very first thing here, if any of you follow basketball or NBA, you'll know the Miami Miami Heat, and you'll see that their arena is now called the FTX Arena. Okay, and you don't wonder what what is FTX. 
And so back here in March of 2026, or 2021, March 26, 2021, you can see here that uh, the name change occurred due to $135 million over 19 years deal with a company called FTX. Now, FTX is one of the major crypto exchanges, meaning they're a broker. They allow you to facilitate between your fiat money, which is regular currency, and cryptocurrency and vice versa and go crypto to crypto as well. But they're just a broker. Uh, they're led by a 29-year-old serial entrepreneur who pretty much whatever he touches turns to, I was going to say gold, but turns to Bitcoin. All right. So very, very heavy influence in the crypto space has now transitioned where those in the regular sport world, especially the basketball world, start to actually correlate the crypto space with basketball for sure. So this was a big splash, but an exchange called Crypto.com decided to blow the roof off. And they went after one of the most storied franchises in all of sports, which is the LA Lakers. The Clippers are there, but no one really talks about the Clippers. <laughs> and maybe that's unfair, but it is what it is. So we all now correlate, especially this generation, it says it's been around for 22 years of operation. It was a staple center. So for an entire generation, you correlate the Lakers with Staples Center. That's all gone. So Crypto.com has now come in and bought in 700 million, uh, changed the name for $700 million for 20 years. For now, the next generation will always correlate the Lakers with Crypto.com, which is a direct, I mean, that's a, what a beautiful name, Crypto.com. You cannot get around the crypto space from there. So again, ask yourself, why are these things happening? This is not just a fad. This is a large sum of money that's going into changing these storied franchises and their arenas or stadiums and, and now bringing them over to the crypto side. So just the average Joe uh, you know, who doesn't know anything about crypto, now they hear the names and they start, to, especially with crypto.com, and there's a direct correlation with the crypto space and start to kind of move down towards that adoption road. So this is pretty big, and this actually happened on the, it went into effect, this shows here, I think it shows here, on uh, this article was November 17th, but the actual transition happened on Christmas day of 2021. So it's a pretty important date for a lot of North Americans. Uh, and so you're, you're now tying crypto to that day, to Christmas, to the LA Lakers, all around, they're just hitting every button possible. So sticking with basketball, let's just go to individual athletes. And I thought this was very interesting. This is Steph Curry, you know, revolutionized the game when it comes to three-point shooting and shooting in general. Why they have him dunking, I don't really know. That's not his thing. Maybe it just looked better to have Bitcoin being dunked. Or uh, kind of looks like he may not even make it. So uh, regardless, let's, let's get into this here. So Steph Curry partnered with... Again, that FT, uh, FTX exchange we mentioned before. And so these are now individual athletes getting sponsorships, getting knowledge by being sponsored of those in the crypto space. And, and Steph Curry right here. And it's not like he's saying he's a crypto savant or he's, you know, he's trying to be, pretending to be something he's not. He tweeted out, he's just getting started in the crypto game. Does anyone have any advice? And this was in September. I believe this article was in September. Yeah, September 7th. And so if any of you know, recently he's had a commercial for a public company called Square. They have a cash app, which is the number one app in the app store. And his commercial of, of him and uh, Iguodala, and they're talking about Bitcoin. So you can see where he's accepting a partnership uh, with FTX in September and is now doing commercials about Bitcoin here in January 2022. So the learning curve increases for him. And just imagine all those around him, fellow teammates, colleagues, friends, and family who may be asking, well, what is this crypto business and why should we get in? So the touch points continue to grow. So now we're going to transition over to America's game, which is football. And there's no better face of football than Tom Brady. Okay, He is a first ballot Hall of Famer, the greatest of all time declared by many, especially in the quarterback position. And 
he's admitting that he would like to be paid in Bitcoin. Now, this is a guy who's not hurting for any money. He has all sponsorships. He's set up. You know, he's got things outside of of uh, football. He even has an NFT company called Autograph.io. So Tom Brady is is very heavily uh, engaged in the space, and he goes on to say that he would love to be paid in, in crypto. And that he definitely sees a world where players are going to be paid in cryptocurrency in the future. So this is not a young cat. This is not a 19, 20, 25 year old. This is a 44 year old athlete who's been there for some time, uh, who's now who sees what's coming. Okay, so this is not just a young person's game. This is a build your asset and protect your asset and prosper game. Okay, so it's not an age. I don't want you guys to get confused and think this is only for the young or whatnot. This this is an asset class that is important for all of us moving forward. Okay, so that is Tom Brady. And then sticking with Tom Brady, he actually had a historic milestone where he threw his 600 touchdown. And uh, the the I can't remember who he threw the touchdown to, but that athlete went into the stands and handed the ball to a fan. And then later realized that, oh, no, this is the 600 touchdown. He broke a record. It's a historic record, most touchdowns ever. And so the fan did end up giving it back, and Tom Brady gifted the fan. I think it was a signed helmet, jersey, maybe season tickets, all of that. So that's what I knew. What I didn't know was that Tom Brady then took it a step further. And so Tom Brady is a, a man with quite a reputation, public figure. So he has to... If he wants to top something, he has to top it with value or what he perceives to have you know, significant value more than his helmet and his jersey. And so he reached out to his partner, which is FTX Exchange again, and said, let's make a trade. Let's get this guy a Bitcoin. Okay, so on top of all that he gave him, Tom thinks, you know, that what he's even more valuable than all of that is one Bitcoin. Now, this guy, this fan who's getting it, Maybe he's associated with the crypto space or understands it. Maybe he's thought about or heard about, or maybe he's never touched about, never even, you know, heard uh, or was interested in Bitcoin at all or crypto at all. Imagine what he's thinking now. Oh, Tom Brady gave me this Bitcoin. So you have a little bit of value. You have quite a bit of valuable just from Tom being the one to deliver it. But why did he give it? You know, and, and what is so valuable one Bitcoin, then his learning process starts. And those around him says, oh, wait, Tom gave you a Bitcoin? Wow, what's a Bitcoin? Why, why would Tom give you a Bitcoin? What do you get out of that? And so they start to kind of go down that rabbit hole. So the education continues, you know, and, and right or wrong, athletes, celebrities carry a lot of influence. And so especially this direct one-on-one -on -one relationship where they are specifically giving you something, it's it's the the influence it has on that particular person and those around them you can't measure that okay so the adoption is coming slowly slowly and, the, and again it always comes back to the question why why would tom who's so who's you know who's not hurting for any money very reputable figure in, in sports and the world why would he be gifting a bitcoin why would he think there's value okay so that's a question to ask now if you know Tom Brady, if you know football, you'll definitely know the next individual here, Aaron Rodgers. Okay, maybe not the most liked player or, or football player, but definitely one of the most talented players out there. And so, through again, Squares Cash App, you know he gets to receive a portion of his, his salary in in Bitcoin. And here he is saying, "I believe in Bitcoin, and the future is bright." And he's like, they have enabled me to take part of my NFL salary in Bitcoin for the very first time. Now, now Square's Cash App, you know, I mentioned this before, uh, but they also allow these athletes to give away one million in cryptocurrency in partnership with them. So how I don't know how they exactly they distribute that amongst the fans or um, users on Cash App, but they allow these these athletes to give back through cryptocurrency as well. So again, another prominent figure you know, uh, being involved in the space. Now, next one here is I picked Odell Beckham. And the reason why I picked Odell Beckham is maybe he's not as storied in his career as, you know, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. But he's, he's a global figure. 
he's a global figure in terms of his social media influence, his presence. He's able to, um, you know, he's able to tap into a segment of the population, a large part that Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers just can't, right? It's a younger crowd. Maybe they're not even to sports. They just like Beckham style. They, they like him as a social media influencer. And so for him to attach himself to Bitcoin and crypto is very, very interesting. Again, it's not just about football. It's not just about North America. His reach is worldwide. So he's taking his entire salary in Bitcoin, again, thanks to Cash App. And let's get out of here. And he's also giving back one million in Bitcoin as well. So very interesting social media figure. Yes, he's an athlete, but he is more known for being a social media presence more than anything. So now we roll over to something completely different. This is more worldwide, this sport. Uh, I know it's got a heavy presence in the U.S., but we see with Khabib Nurmagomedov and others, the reach of the UFC has probably outstripped the other uh, major sports in North America. And everybody loves a heavyweight. Everyone loves a heavyweight that's feared and has knockout power and has that it factor. And Francis Ngannou is one of those who has that. And the very fact that Francis Ngannou even talks about converting half of his pay to Bitcoin is unbelievable. Further to him, not only just being a UFC heavyweight champion, is the fact that he's from Africa. I believe he's from Nigeria. Uh, but just being a the face of Africa or one of the faces of Africa when it's tied to sports, it's, it's, it's another notch in crypto's belt that we have such a figure it becomes a spokesperson for Africa as well as for uh, the crypto space, you know, but here he goes. He says he's been talking with family and friends in the crypto space. Bitcoin is huge in Africa and I'm thinking of taking my fight purse in it. Bitcoin is the future and I'm a believer. So a very, very big statement by a very, very big man. And so not to forget the rest of the world, you talk about soccer or real football, as they would like to say, but very large franchise, very storied franchise, European franchise here is AC Milan. And they've just signed a sponsorship deal with another exchange, another crypto exchange called BitMEX. So they are also getting into the, into the uh, crypto space as well. When you look at tennis, now we, I haven't touched on NFTs on this channel yet, but I will. It's, definitely will uh, in the near future. Uh, but the Australian Open is getting into tennis NFTs and a uh, good way to spark interest not in tennis, yes, but also in the cryptoverse, okay? And so they're, they've gone through here. They're talking about NFTs throughout the space. And while I'm heavily, I've heavily spoken about Bitcoin, you know, NFTs, I'm sure most of the world has heard of as of today. And uh, definitely more and more touch points. But this is just a part of the crypto space. So more and more people get sucked in, whether it's through NFTs, whether it's through Bitcoin. More and more are seeing value in the crypto space. And you can find value in a variety of avenues. And then last but not least, I thought I'd touch on cricket. All right. Again, it's through NFTs. Uh, but they also have um, international crickets getting NFTs on a specific flow, uh, blockchain called Flow. And so bringing in more and more of the, popula the global population into the sports world. So, guys, maybe a little long-winded here, but I, I just wanted to bring this point home. Whether you're a sports fan, whether you're not a sports fan, you need to understand that crypto is global. It's here to stay. And you guys need to educate yourselves and be a part of, the, be a part of this movement. This is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And it's a phenomenal technology, which will have phenomenal use cases going forward. Use cases that may not even be thought of as of today. So everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it brought you some value. Maybe it's a little bit interesting. Maybe we'll do some more sports related ones going forward or in different industries. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.